Good morning guys and welcome to this edition of Hyclopedia. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of an area of Singapore that not too many people by locals know about. It's called Kranji. Now I know what you locals are thinking. You can't walk around Kranji. It's too far, it's too hot, it's too much traffic and everything else. And you're correct. So in a change up from my usual modus operandi, today I'm not walking. I am actually taking ta -da, my Brompton. Now this is my racing green Brompton. I like to call it the Porsche of folding bicycles and let's be realistic it's probably the only Porsche I'm ever going to have in my lifetime. This one cost me around a thousand pounds about 12 years ago when I bought it and um, yeah it's very expensive for a bike but it's very good quality and it will last you a lifetime if you look after it. I got this one from Lane and Trip in Taiwan and over the 12 years that I've had it, I've used it a hell of a lot. Especially now I'm in Singapore because it's nice and flat and I don't have a car. Do you know how expensive it is to get a car in Singapore? There are many reasons to like a Brompton, but for me, the main reason is the compactness of the fold. Plus, it's easy to move around with you thanks to the small wheels and you can take it on public transport with no problem whatsoever. It's really convenient. Plus you've got the accessories like the bags which are really good quality and make taking things with you very easy. But the main thing about the Brompton compared to other folding bicycles is the speed with which you can fold it. Around 15 seconds and you're ready to go. I popped into Sungai Bulo Wetland Reserve just for a quick stop I'm on the way to my first destination and um, there is a huge saltwater crocodile basking in the sun um, just over the water I'm not sure if you'll be able to see him because uh, the sun is facing this way but over there in the background there's a saltwater crocodile and I uh, took a few shots but there's also a park ranger here who's taking pictures and he said he might be able to uh, send one or two to me so if he does then you'll see them absolutely beautiful creature he's probably about two and a half meters long and uh, yeah it's a nice start to the day in Karenji Okay guys, I'm here at my first official stop for today. It's Hay Dairy's Goat Farm. And it's kind of just like a tourist goat farm where they produce milk and you can bring the family along and you can feed the goats. And you can also have some fresh goat milk, which I'm gonna get later. I would imagine that your kids would love to come here and feed the goats although it's a little bit noisy and a bit stinky but I mean that's what it's like with farm animals but uh, yeah seems like a good place so I've had a look around the goat farm it's quite a nice place if you have some young kids they probably get a kick out of coming here and um, yeah they sell goat's milk fresh goat's milk to drink so I got a small chocolate and a small plain one to try and it's supposed to be very very good for you so uh, let's try some goat's milk I'm gonna go with the chocolate one first Cheers 
this. Mm. It's actually not as strong tasting as I remember. It's quite nice. This must be a different kind, a different breed of goat to the milk that my daughter used to drink when she was younger because that was so much, the taste was so much stronger. And this one is actually quite mild, it's very nice actually. It's almost, in fact I'd go as far as to say it's better than cow's milk. I quite like the taste. I could drink this quite regularly, it's really nice. And then um, the small bottle is two dollars fifty each. So I'm here at Jurong Front Farm and uh, honestly I did do some research and I thought it was open but the shop area where you can buy stuff is not open today so instead I'm just having a look around and maybe I'll come back at the weekend and sample some frog's legs but uh, again like the dairy farm this looks like a pretty cool place to uh, bring the kids they can see some frogs and if they're brave enough, they can even try some frog's legs. Now, I know what you're thinking. Singapore too hot la. And riding a bike is no fun. Well, actually, on a day like today, where it's overcast, it's not too hot. And honestly, even on the really sunny days in Singapore, riding a bike is not as bad as you think because you've got the airflow that's keeping you cool constantly. Of course you sweat, but my argument is that even if you go everywhere in a car in Singapore, as soon as you get out of the car, you start to sweat anyway. So unless you're going to stay inside the whole time, then c'est la vie. Um, other benefits about riding a bike in Singapore are that it's pretty flat, so it's easy. Also, the drivers on the roads are pretty respectful, mostly, I will say. Not everybody, of course, but the large percentage are really careful when it comes to cyclists. And uh, so cycling here is not too bad. Besides, on a hot day, or in fact any day, I usually take a change of clothes with me for the end of the day to travel home because nobody likes sitting next to the sweaty stinky guy so if you ever see a foreign guy in a bathroom wiping himself down with a wet towel then it's probably me so say hi can't beat one of these for 11s, the old curry puff, one of the best snacks you can get in Singapore and these are only two dollars for five. I've literally reached the end of the road in Singapore. See right down the bottom there is um, the end of this road, Lim Chu Kang Road. You basically run straight into the Johor Strait and then across that you've got Malaysia and there's a bunch of police customs officials down there and I had to ask them nicely just to go up to the edge of the water for a look although I couldn't take any pictures because filming like so many other places in Singapore is illegal down there. Actually there's an interesting house um, just along the coast with a bit of history but you can't see it um, and I asked if you could see it but you can't so that's a bit disappointing but um, yeah we're off to the next destination now
Alright, so I'm here at one of my favourite places in Singapore, Bollywood Vegetables. And um, it's like an eco farm and it also does food, really good food. And the restaurant here is really, is, um, I would recommend it to anybody. I've been there in one of my previous videos, which you can find here. Um, but today I came and I tried something different. Today I had the nasi lemak meal and um, it comes with um, some side dishes. You've got green beans and tempeh, you've got some tempura, you've got the famous blue pea rice, you've got the chicken wing, you've got the ikan bilis and peanuts and then you've got like a small dish of kind of like a watery curry and as usual it was delicious. And I also went with my favorite drink, which is the Aloe Lime Cooler. It's only $3 and it is a really nice drink. It's packed with aloe vera, nice lime flavor, not too sweet, great to wash down your food with. And this time I even splashed out and had a little side dish of cake. I had koi binka, which is a tapioca, a baked tapioca dessert. It's kind of buttery and then there's coconut on top and it was really good because it wasn't too sweet you all know I don't like stuff too sweet it was just right and so once again Bollywood vegetables the food was brilliant although it's a little bit pricier than you pay other places in Singapore I think it's worth it um, and it's a good place to come for a nice morning or afternoon out Now, in case you were wondering where I got these fine shorts from, they are my new shorts. I picked them up at Decathlon last week. Only 25 Singapore dollars, really good deal, nice and comfortable. And yeah, again, buying stuff from Decathlon. So pretty much everything I've got on today, apart from my underwear, is from Decathlon. So, Decathlon, if you're watching, hit me up. I've emailed you a couple of times, but you never got back to me. I'm waiting. Now, I know it's dependent on the season, but where's the birds? I have no idea what noise or what bird that is making the noise, but it's really cool. Uh, this place behind me is pretty interesting. It's a vertical farm. Whereas, sorry, there's so many trucks going past, it's very noisy. Um, you can see they've got small rows and rows of vegetables. But they all grow on top of each other like that, probably about 10 high. I guess it's quite good for a, a small place such as Singapore and uh, they're worried more about their food security these days because of Covid and things like that so there's probably a bit of scope for increasing the number of these kind of places in Singapore because I don't think there's too many. As far as I know Kranji area is the only place where any kind of farming goes on in Singapore but most of that is kind of like in high profit margin areas such as fish farms and things like that. Not actually sure how much actual vegetation farming goes on but uh, this is one place I've noticed which is pretty cool.
Closed because of COVID. Okay guys, I've come to the end of my day out in Cranji by Brompton. I'm back at Cranji MRT station. I'm around the back because it's too noisy around the front and I'm just getting ready to uh, head back home to Badok. Um, overall, it's been a great day, although a very long one. And I'm not going to lie, although it's overcast, it's been really hot and sweaty. And I've drank several litres of water just to stay hydrated. But overall, it's a great day out. Although I wouldn't recommend bringing your kids because I think the roads are slightly too dangerous for little ones. So if you had to bring kids on a day out, I would suggest either taking public transport or driving and go to the dairy, go to the frog farm, take them to Bollywood Veggies and I think they'll have a good day out. Out of all the places I've been today, if I had to miss one out it would probably be Cranji Marshes because to be honest there was not a lot there and I wouldn't bother unless you are a hardcore birder or you've got a fetish for quiet marshy places. So. That's it for today, if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe and if you're really keen on my stuff then you can always click the bell for notifications and I'll see you next time for some more Singapore or Taiwan related adventures. Over and out.